And welcome back here tonight at 10 o'clock. Remember last night here at 10, Mark Woodley introduced you to Eastern Iowa, Nathan Frederick. Nathan, who recently climbed to the summit of Mount Everest. What a climb that was, <laughs> but he wasn't the only Eastern Iowan to <laughs> attempt to climb the tallest mountain in the world. KWWL's Mark Woodley tells us about a certain sport ca sportscaster who also attempted the same feat. Well, on Tuesday, I introduced you to Nathan Frederick, a Cedar Rapids native who made the climb to the top of Everest. But, well, there was also one Eastern Iowa sportscaster that was in Nepal this spring and did make it at least within a few miles. It's the ultimate dream for many mountaineers across the world, conquering Everest. Not having the time, the money, or any type of skill to make that happen, three of us Iowans opted for something still challenging, but a little less daunting. For myself and friends Dan and Sam, it started with a flight to Lukla, Nepal, and a unique airport dubbed the most dangerous on the planet. The most dangerous airport. And thus began an 11 day trek through the Himalayas, led by guide Madden. We trekked through valleys, over rivers, while facing the region's biggest natural threat. Yeti, look out for the Yeti! Ah! <laughs> he was like that the entire trip, and while there was no Yeti, there was a lot of walking. A good amount of it uphill. The trek to base camp and back covers approximately 85 miles after factoring in the acclimatization hikes. Through sunny days, rainy days, snowy days, we trudged on in one of the warmest months in the mountains, which really didn't seem all that warm. It actually just finally stopped snowing here. I was told that wouldn't happen until higher up, but apparently since I'm here, they changed the rules about the weather. No, the outdoors was not heated, nor were the accommodations, but the views were enough to make up for all of that, except for the times when there were no views. There's a couple people making out by that rock uh, back there. Uh, other than that, most of the day has looked like this. But most days looked like this, and after eight days, goal number one was reached, the sprawling tent city that is Everest Base Camp. This is incredible, I'm so excited to be here. But here was only one stop. One day later, it was up another 1,500 feet for the best view of the world's tallest mountain, and a quick lesson on weights and measures. Now we're on Kalapatar. On the top of the Kalapatar. On the top of Kalapatar. 5,619 meters. Yeah, they don't know meters back home. It's over 18,000 feet. It was a quick but unforgettable moment high above the clouds, but then it was time to head back down, three days back to where it all started, which included a second trip over the famed Hillary Bridge, suspended 442 Bridge. feet high this above the there. rapids. And if anyone were to collapse, I'd want it to be this one, because there'd be no writhing and pain on the rocks below. It is splat the second you hit the bottom. And after a week and a half of a life well lived, it was time to celebrate, and one day later, it was time to go home. And I figured after doing all of that, I'd look lean and buff. You know, we went up to 18,000 feet. Uh, instead, after 11 days, I look like blue from old school. Rain, snow, sun, clouds, everything. We went through all of it, and it was all awesome. And since I've returned, I've had several people ask me if I ever plan to attempt the summit of Everest. Well, that answer is a very emphatic no. Back to you.